Over the last couple of lessons, we've been looking at fiction descriptions with a particular focus on setting and the creation of mood and the way in which the words and language create those things for us. This lesson, you're going to be assessing each other's work in order to make improvements. OK, if you take a look at the objectives on the board here for today's lesson, first thing, to revise and redraft your work to make it as effective as possible for the reader. Today's English lesson was with a Year 8 class and it was working on them redrafting their written work and making improvements to that work. They came into Year 7 just below Level 4 and I would say the majority of the class now are at that Level 4. OK, first of all, what I want us to do is to take a look at a piece that I've written but it does need improving. London, summer weather. Birds singing in the trees as sweetly as a choir in a church. People smiling and happy. Even the sun smiles down on the earth. There are no clouds. Rows of flowers stand in the park. It is breezy. Now that's something I did quite quickly and I think it needs to be improved. Now, can anyone point out to me an adjective for me then, please? Would it be happy? Good. OK, now happy. Now, for me, I could have said something more effective than just happy. Perhaps, to give you an example, joyful or full of joy. More descriptive than just happy. There are places where I can see I could have added adjectives to make the piece more interesting and more lively. For instance, here. Rather than just even the sun, I could have had bright sun, for example. And I think there's another occasion where I could have used another adjective. Can anyone see one in here where I could put an adjective in to be more descriptive? OK, Leon. You could put rows of beautiful flowers. Excellent. So they're the kinds of improvements you can make to the descriptive words that you're using. The next thing that you had to look at were similes. Can anyone identify the simile that I've used there in that piece? I felt I needed to make peer assessment a more structured part of their learning so that they could actually improve their work much more fully than they were doing so far. So today's lesson, they took their piece of written work and I gave them a sheet identifying all of the different areas that I wanted them to focus on. And they were actually taking one another's books and annotating it for each one of those features before actually going on to redraft and make the changes finally to the written piece. London, very hot and sunny, the trees stay still while the birds fly by. Everything was calm and quiet, the leaves walk swiftly along the road. Everyone is sitting down, talking to one another. Everyone is sunbathing on the soft grass. People are eating ice cream, as cold as an iceberg. Yeah, I like this because it, it gives you a good feeling that it's hot and that everyone wants to sit down to get sunbathing. But Consider the whole paragraph, what mood feeling is created. Is this mood what the writer intended? I reckon the mood is that nice and calm and joyful. Is that what you wanted to, the mood to be? Um, yeah. Right then, so now we've got to find two adjectives that describe the words. So, can you see any? Sunny. Mm. So, sunny, like cold. Does the word phrase image work well? Do you, like, do you like that word or do you want to make changes to it? Or I don't really like it, but I don't know what else to write. Could you use hot and sticky or something like that? Uh, right then, so we could change that to sticky. Right, do you like cold or do you want to change that? Or? No, I think cold sounds right. Right then, so personification. Right. Can um, the leaves walk swiftly? No, no. no. So. Teenagers chatting noisily on their phones. Full stop. People moving joyfully to the radio in the park and in the massive pool. A cool breeze comes from the air and misses everyone's hair. Misses up. Misses up. Misses up. Everyone's hair. hair. Everyone is hot and smelly, chucking water over themselves. I think that sounds a little bit boring. Uh, smelly, chucking. Uh, 
over their boiling bodies. Okay, let's go. Um, boys playing for tea on the pitch, getting a day and they will They won't. They won't give up. I think that's good because it's describing that like, what they're feeling. Um, girls all scented up with smelly perfume. Adults glossed up with sun lotion. Mm. <coughs> I don't think that needs any changes. Um, we have to go on to this descriptions of the weather. A cool breeze comes from the air and messes up everyone's hair. Okay, what are you looking at there? How are you getting um, a I call breeze. Breeze. Okay, so have you finished with that sentence? Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look at the next one then. Everyone is hot and smelly, chucking water over, and you've made a change there. Chucking water over their boiling bodies. Good. What did you do there then to this word, and why did you do that? Well, that sounded a bit plain, so you decided to, like, change it so it's more descriptive. Make it more interesting. Very good. And you've even got boiling bodies there. What have you actually used? A new technique that we've not actually been over, but what have you used there, boiling bodies? Oh, oh. Do you remember when the letters of the words yeah. are the same? Yeah. It's alliteration that you use there, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Can you identify a word in there that um, you could improve? Um, that, that might be a bit informal, really. There's a word there that doesn't quite seem to sound right to Shocking. me. Yeah, I think that one. OK, what words could you have instead? Something a little more effective, a bit more descriptive. Spraying. Uh, yes, spraying. Good. Could be throwing. Spraying is a good one because the water would spray. OK, so you could note that one in there. I think that would be an improvement. I thought today's lesson was quite successful. Some of the students needed the sheet as a scaffold because they didn't really know what to look for first and they needed their attention directed towards that. Others are already beginning to work more independently and they have a good idea of the sorts of things they should be looking at and they're quite happy to work on that effectively mm. themselves. OK, again, lots of good work going on there and I would like to actually see and hear some of that work that you've been producing. OK, thank you, Billy. Let's hear your one. Nice, clear voice. Imagine London as hot as the sun scorching down on you. Imagine summer weather as beautiful as a newborn baby and as clear as glass. The birds. The birds sing with glee for the sun is dancing. The tourists. The tourists at the water's edge taking pictures of the lovely sights. London. London. Well, what can we say? It's such an interesting place to be with people to see and meet while the leaves on the trees wave their arms. OK, lovely. There were lots of really good uses of language in there. Can you tell me one or two of the improvements you made? Yeah, I used similes like London as hot as the sun, and I used them um, for sonification, like the birds sing with glee for the sun is dancing. OK, were those things you added in? Yeah. OK, thank you, Billy. Anybody else would like to read out their work? OK, Charlotte. London, unbearable August weather. The blue sky and the red sun is cramping us into big crowds of people waiting outside the Tate Modern. The sun beating down on us, making us swell inside like a big monster trying to squash us into a hole. An empty bottle of water tightly clenched in my hand like it's the end of the world. The drag ass monster Rasta is slivering along with flames bursting out of his large jaws. The people pouring out of the museum were looking fresh and bright. They they open the doors for entry, so we all walk into the air-conditioned building. Good, you've gone on to develop yours in a lot more detail too. There were some lovely images there and created a very good mood and a very different mood from Billy's piece. Who could describe what kind of mood or feeling Charlotte was creating there with her piece? Danielle? It's like it was hot and squished and like you didn't want to be there. Good, very uncomfortable, wasn't yeah. it, feeling there? Very good, well done. Was there an exact example, Charlotte, you could give us of how... You both improved your work there. Um, there is one flames bursting out of its big mouth, but I didn't really like big mouth, so changed to large jaws. Um, big mouth doesn't really sort, sort of suit, suit it, so I think large jaws sort of describes how big its jaws are. OK, so you just preferred the word jaws. It's possibly a bit more formal as well, isn't it? 
OK, so you can see this lesson, if we return to the objectives at the start of the lesson, you were aiming to be able to redraft and rewrite your work with improvements so that it was very effective for the reader. And the way in which you were doing that was through peer assessment. You were looking at one another's work to actually bring out the strengths and weaknesses through your discussion. Now, can anyone tell me, in what way do you feel you benefited from actually having that discussion with the person you worked with? How was it better than maybe just checking through on your own? Charlotte? It's nice to know that people like your work, because you're not really sure, so it's helping you, because it shows that um, you're, you've worked hard on it and, it and other people appreciate it. I had really long sentences and he helped me to split them up with capital letters and full stops. It helped because, like, with Nathy because he helped me put more interesting words into my sentences, like ad adjectives. OK, good. You've produced some really pleasing work this lesson and I hope you remember you're never just alone necessarily to do your own written work. You can always allow somebody else to check and make changes along with you.